Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of the Unity Network, where we're going to make a lot of STEM content related to science fairs, robotics, and much more. So in today's episode, we're joined by Natasha Koviwat, who is actually the ICEP 2023 Gordon E. Moore Award winner for positive outcomes for future generations. Um, and she received $50,000 for her work in finding biomarkers in the brain to help prevent suicides. So Natasha, thank you so much for joining me today. No, thank you so much for having me. Of course. First of episode course. too. There's expectations. I hope yeah, I'm... yeah. So, um, just to start off, like, how about you give an uh, introduction to yourself? Yeah, so as Zach introduced for me, thank you. My name is Natasha Kolyuat. I am a rising senior at Jericho High School. And yeah, that's basically it. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and if, you, if I didn't mention before, but I'm Zach. I'm a rising senior also at Boston Latin School. So the first question we have is, how do you start conducting research? You know, did your school help you out or did you do like a lot of code emailing? Yeah, so I started researching suicide back in my freshman year and how essentially I started off was I was really interested in this field and there was this one professor, I kept reading all of his journal articles and then I went down sort of a rabbit hole mm -hmm. of all of his articles and then I decided to draft a cold email out to him but I initially, I, I didn't send the email yeah. but then my my dad and then I also had uh, my research teacher at school really encouraged me to send it so that's how it started off and yeah, he, he said yes, we met on Zoom, multiple Zoom meetings and mm -hmm. then accepted me to work with him. So wow, that's, how it that, that's a great story. Did you do any research before then or like how did you get into the, like the field of like you know suicide or that work yeah so okay i did i did banana research banana before research. Then. okay yeah yeah so what i did for i think it was middle school back in eighth grade during the pandemic i tried to make this it's like material science biochem but i tried to make this um, film that it's made out of like sodium alginate and all these mm -hmm. other uh, ingredients that would essentially prolong the ripening process of fruits and vegetables. And then while I did like doing that because it was very hands-on experimental, yeah. I I didn't like it enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. So I really, really I I love neuro, mm -hmm. like neurobiology, anything neuro related. And I also really like psychiatry. So neuropsychiatry just came really naturally to me. I realized I really love reading about mental health because it's a really prevalent problem. Right, right. And that's how I got to this field specifically. Okay, yeah, great to hear about that. So the second question is like what's your experience with like science fair competitions? Like did you start off like really young or like was it like more recently until you picked up like science fair in general? Yeah, so I guess, well, in my school, I'm part of the science research class, mm -hmm. and yeah. one of the one of the requirements of the class is you compete in these competitions, but I didn't start competing in ICEF until my sophomore year. That was my first year I qualified for ICEF, and I've been doing that ever since. But before then, I did local or regional fairs and just here and there smaller fairs. Yeah, okay. That's cool to hear. Do you ever do um, another science fair I've heard of is like JSHS? you ever do that? Yeah, so I did, funny story, I did JSHS last year. Okay. And the way it works in my region is you have to come in first in order to qualify for the next round. So I came in second oh, last okay. year. This, That's yeah, and then, yeah. No, it's okay. And then this year, I didn't place at all. Oh. <laughs> With my magic. Okay, I mean, it turned out fine. It turned out fine. Yeah, no, but honestly, I, I really love JSHS, and I really recommend everyone does it. I don't know how it works in other regions, but in my region, what they do is they put everyone into the same room. So you have, I guess, 20-something people in your category in your room, and then there's multiple rooms, and they make you sit through everyone's presentation. Uh -huh. And usually people don't like that, but I, I really like that because I got to learn about everyone else's. So I think this is region-specific to Long Island, but yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. So actually this year I entered JSHS also. So it's kind of similar. They had like all the presenters and you'd like listen mm -hmm. to it. Um, but then like for all like the like pres like the poster presenters, they gave like no time to us. So like we didn't have a lot of time for that. Yeah. So I think like um, we had like two minutes. We gave like a pitch for two minutes and then I got no questioning at all. 
So I was like, like, what is happening? But yeah, it was a cool experience. Two minutes? Yeah, two minutes. Oh. It was like crazy. Ours um, gives us 12. 12? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's completely different, I guess. But yeah, our, our GSHS is definitely a little bit different, I guess. So I guess the next question is then, how did you like feel coming up to ISEF 2023? You know, were you like excited, nervous, or like what was your what was your feelings in general? Oh, I was so excited because I I didn't think. Well, I was already really nervous that I wouldn't make it mm -hmm. because well, last year I didn't expect to make it at all, and then somehow I made it last year. So this year coming into science fair in general, I felt that I worked much more with my project. I w I'm really in love with my project from this year because I, I. I, I basically planned everything and then executed and then it fit my hypothesis. Yeah. So I'm just really excited, right? So I already had the mentality of, oh, I made ISEF last year. Well, what if I don't make it this year? That's going to be mm -hmm. pretty sad because I loved ISEF last year. Right. But yeah, so when I found out I made it and then I was an ISEF finalist, oh, I was, it was over from there. Yeah, that, like, that's great to hear. I'm planning yeah. everything. So can you talk a little bit about like your experience at ISEF? How did you like feel during the week over there oh my gosh i think there's so many emotions when you go there because i feel that whenever people say you're never going to really have an experience like icef again i definitely think that's pretty true because it's an international fair there's over was it 1600 participants all all around the world and then the, we're all in high school and then it's like a nerd fest too yeah. <laughs> And just really absorbing everyone's vibes and bouncing off of that and getting to meet new people, talking with everyone, talking with judges. I feel that the network portion of it was, I, I really, really loved that. So I was just really excited the entire time and I didn't really, I don't know, I was just happy. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I agree with that. I met like a lot of cool people there too. Like a bunch of like the RSI kids coming up, like I met at ISEF 2023. So mm -hmm. definitely really cool to meet a lot of people there. Um, so. Similar question, but what was your favorite part about ISEF, you think? My favorite part about ISEF? Like all of it. Of all of it, oh my gosh. I think it was... So, I, I came from LICEF, right? The, the yeah, name of my, right. Yeah, you know, for the Long Island Science Engineering Fair. Really, it was really cool to see in the beginning. We were all strangers. And then by the end of it, we all, because they made us do mandated poster sessions where we would present mm -hmm. to each other. Yeah. So, I think, like, the trauma bonding <laughs> really made all of us get closer. And then I, I think I, my favorite memory was really seeing everyone rip it on the dance floor. Oh, and there were right. people doing Macarena and then other really interesting things the dance is your favorite part yeah okay <laughs> nice to hear i didn't i'm not a dancer i just like other people yeah. watching other people it was so fun there i remember that that was crazy okay um so how did it feel being caught on stage i know like you know you got the got the gordon e moore award that's a huge award so like how did it feel when you got that happy <laughs> no, um, that's, no that's i get so okay th I, I could there's many, so many things yeah things. Okay. yeah yeah I'll, I'll start i i don't know where to start i guess it was just the fact that i wasn't expecting to get first place at all or even or even place to be honest because going into the competition what i did this is toxic i definitely don't recommend this was i went into my category i counted the number of people there i was like okay there's 67 projects i know the top 25 percent usually place so i was like okay 67 yeah. divided by five that's around 16 projects yeah. and then i went onto project board to look at everyone in my right. category and i was i was like okay i just <laughs> have to break it off 16 because i just wanted to place yeah. i started counting everyone and then i realized I was counting their project IDs, so it was BMED 001, I thought uh -huh. it was good, BMED 002, I thought it was good, and by the time <laughs> I got to 16, I was like, okay, it's 16, and I have to go through, what, 50-something more projects? Yeah. This is not going to work, I'm not going to place. So, okay, okay. really, when I got first place, I was already satisfied, and then when they announced the Gordon E. Moore yeah. Award, they made the entire video and everything, and I, I've known who Gordon E. Moore was, for a while now, okay. I, I wow. know of Moore's law. I know he Moore's found it. Law, Intel. of course, yeah. Yeah, I know he found it Intel. I know because, well, I watched the first science fair documentary by the Nat Geographic. Mm -hmm. 
that documentary i watched it back in middle school because jericho was part of it so i knew gordon e. Moore was intel yeah. and everything so to really it was significant not only did i get a top award but to have the to receive the award in his name and in his honor and in his legacy i thought that was yeah i that was that's great to hear wow yeah okay so um next question so after icef 2023 you know you got this award what do you think is your like short-term goals with your project or just in general with your like life what's your like short-term goals you're asking me for my life goals. <laughs> or, like i guess like with research or whatever you want to say <laughs> research like, goals. um so i'm still continuing my project from this year expanding and extending on it i hope to compete in STS next year. STS, so that's yeah, another right. big competition for seniors. So that's one. And in terms of other short term girls, I got to figure out where I want to go to college. And oh, yeah, get. that's a big one. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a struggle for all the seniors. I yeah. have not started the common app. Oh, I'm no. not looking at anything. You got to start soon, bro. Yeah, thanks, thanks <laughs> for that. I don't, yeah, I just. I've just been in the lab every single day. I'm trying to grind out my data. Those are my yeah, that, that sounds good. Um, and then similar to that question, what do you think is your like long term goals, you know, maybe career wise or just in general, what do you think about like you're going to do in the future, maybe 10 years down the line? Yeah, I think that for for college, first of all, I definitely want to major in neuro, maybe mm -hmm. with uh, mind behavioral psych track, something like that. I haven't figured it out. Uh, quite exactly yet but in terms of future career paths I really want to be a pediatrician maybe I'll look into being a pediatric psychiatrist I think we the world we definitely need more of those yeah because it's important to make sure that our youth is good and strong before because our future depends on our for young sure, ones for sure. yeah but aside from that not anything else specific okay good to hear about that um and like lastly, do you want to shout out anyone like that helped you in the process or just in general, you know? Yeah, I do. So many people. So I want to first start off with my lab. I'm at the Molecular Imaging and Neuropathology Division at Columbia University. And my mentors were really, really helpful because they, they're, they're just really patient. I feel that in order to have good research, to have a good support system is really important too because I would present my ideas to my mentor. He would give me feedback. I'd go back, I'd reflect, and then I'd come with him with new drafts. And also, in terms of monetary wise, they funded my yeah, research. For sure. It was $10,000 or something. Yeah, I did not have to pay a single dime. Thank you so much to my lab for that. So <laughs> that's one. Second person I want to shout out is my research teacher, Dr. Serena McCalla. Um, she's She's just amazing. She really helped me edit everything and streamline it to make sure, because I like to go on tangents in case you couldn't yeah. tell from the talk. <laughs> yeah, so she really kept me in check with that and just so so much more help. So definitely her. And also my family, because I can't drive. I don't have a license. So they would bring me every single day to the lab. Okay, Um. so lastly, just before we go, we're gonna like, ask you for any tips you have. So. Do you have any tips you know, for any aspiring researchers, maybe people who haven't done research before or just want to get started with it? Yeah, so I get this question quite often, and I feel that I always like to start off by saying, no matter, regardless of any tips that I give, everyone has different circumstances, different access to resource, so it's not necessarily a one-size-fits-all thing. I can only give like pretty big tips. But my number one tip would be, this is really cliche, but I didn't think it really mattered until it worked out for me, was I definitely recommend cold emailing the professors that you're interested in working in, regardless of the institution they're from. So I ha there's two ends of the spectrum, right? I know some people who, for example, uh, Stony Brook, it's a local university, or LIU, it's a local university where I'm at. And there are some people, even though those institutions have really stellar research for their fields, they don't want to go to those institutions because they want to go to those big name Ivy ones. Yeah. Don't be like that. <laughs> okay, don't, don't do that. Don't get hooked on the name. So that's one end of the spectrum. And then the other end of the spectrum is kind of where I felt in my freshman year. Um, my first mentor, he was from Harvard Medical School, and I never thought that he would even 
open my email, so I didn't want to send the cold email. But send it. Do it. Send. And if it doesn't, it, if it doesn't work out, it's okay because you at least have the template, right? You just change it up for the next one and keep going. But yeah, like, good advice. Good advice. Customize it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, my okay. one advice. That's good. That's good. Okay. And then, so the second question is like. Do you have any tips on how you can be your best self on competition day? You know, there's a lot of nerves going into it. What's the best way to prepare for that, you think? Okay, so I think to prepare, so best thing to do for competition day, there's two two tips I can give. One is you don't really just wake up in competition day and do well, unless you're really lucky or just really skilled. I, I, I'm not either, but the preparation kind of goes in more long term. So just make sure weeks, Go, leading up to the competition, you really know your stuff because the questions that the judges asked me were really intense. I had my first special awards judge come up to me and say, okay, um, I already know the answers to the questions I'm, at, I'm about to ask you, so keep it succinct. Don't put any fluff into it. I was like, oh, okay, wow. so this is what, wow, this is what I'm dealing with. Yeah. So make sure you definitely know your stuff, read a lot, and yeah so that's long-term preparations and it'll help with the nerves when you get to a day of because you'll feel that oh i already i did everything i possibly could to be right, ready right. so it doesn't really matter if they throw a weird question your way just talk about something you do know and then make them yeah. be impressed with what you know yeah so that's one and then for short for short-term preparation tips the day of the competition i listen to the Barbie soundtrack okay. um, on top of the world. Pick your hype music. I highly recommend on top of the world from Barbie and the Princess Academy. That's what I listen to. I'm 100 percent sure. That's why <laughs> I was surprised. I, so, I think I've heard of that. Like someone listening to like their hype music and getting into the zone. Yeah, I, I think I've heard yeah. of that. Oh, and another thing is my teacher was my research teacher, Dr. McCallis. She was really nice. She gave all of us care packages with oh, I have it over there. Cool. Should I just get up and get sure, it? Sure, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, give me a second. Okay. Okay, hold on. She wrote notes on it, oh, and then she put, yeah, I too. know. Okay. It was yeah, and then she put stuff in it. So I think that I'm really lucky I have a research teacher who cares. But you put self care first, okay? So make yourself your own care package. Um, I would put water in it for the ladies. Um, hair ties in case your hair gets in the way and chapsticks too because your lips get pretty dry at least yeah. for me when I talk for a while but definitely water because you'll be talking a lot I think how many judges did you have I had like seven I think or six yeah yeah, yeah I had yeah I had eight or no I had seven scheduled ones and then I had like additional ones mm -hmm. as well so yeah. I think you're gonna be speaking a lot that's so, so true yeah you definitely need the water um that's probably your best asset because like i remember my voice was so dry yeah you definitely need some water okay um i think that's all the tips and questions we have today so natasha thank you so much for joining t with me today um we're so glad to have you here no thank you for having me thank you yeah. okay have a good one